It has been six months now since we started the community quarantine in hopes to stop the pandemic here in the Philippines. As of now, the unemployment rate is at the highest record it has ever been. And we don't know how much longer this will last. But together, we can survive this. That's why today, we're here to keep hope alive by distributing grocery goods to the people around our community. This is just the start. We will do more of this and we encourage you to take part in it. Now, in response to a fire incident that hit a neighborhood in Las Pinas more than two weeks ago, we decided to help these families who got affected. We will be giving groceries, which we call Bag of Hope. Together, let's bring hope to the people around us. I have heard the call of different groups from the medical community for a two-week community quarantine in Mega Manila. Hope heals. Hope comforts. Hope is peace. Hope is love. Hope is faith. Hope is Jesus. Family, I want to welcome you formally to Hope Alive Conference. It's the first time that we're doing a Hope Alive Conference. I know it's going to be crazy good. It's going to be crazy cool just for you guys. Hey, what a way to finish 2020. Just getting together and receiving more of what God has in store for us. Not just this year, but for the coming year. Let's finish strong together. And let's anticipate and have a great expectation for 2021. Even as in this conference, God deposits and steers us up anew. Man, I know it's going to be crazy good. So as we go throughout the conference, as we go through two full power-packed and word-packed days, 
I pray that you guys take note of what God is going to be saying to you, depositing in your hearts. And why don't you share it to the people, to, your, to our online family? Why don't you comment down those takeaways? You know, encourage somebody in the comment section. Let's continually engage with the speakers and with one another. Whether you're on Facebook, whether you are on YouTube, whether you are in, in the Zoom, in the streams, speaking of, why don't we talk about our schedule? You know, we're going to be having morning rallies. We're going to be having afternoon streams. We're going to be having night rallies for these two days. And I know you guys will be blessed. Now, in case you're wondering how to go about and join those afternoon rallies, well, you can go ahead to our Facebook page, Hope Alive PH. You can see those details right there down below. Go to that page, like that page, and you can find the streams that are going to be fitting just for you. We got some streams for business people. We got some for the young people. We got some for the pastors and the church leaders and also for the families and a whole lot more. Why don't you just join in and check those out? I know there'll be one that'll be just perfect just for you. And so I know that you guys ex are excited to get this ball rolling. So why don't we go ahead and join Pastor Josel Evangelista and Pastor Mylene Evangelista as they open up this conference. Hope Alive. Hey, good morning. Good morning to you. Hope Alive Conference. Day one. Wow, I'm excited that you are with us online because I know that God has great things in store for us these two days. Hope Alive, Hope Alive in your hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? I am so excited for these two days. Yep. So, honey, why don't you tell them a little bit more about why we are doing this conference? Well, we know that throughout the year it's been a crazy year but in spite of it all we have hope because our confidence is in Jesus hope in him amen the hope of glory hope is a confident expectation of good and so these two days is all about us just wanting to add our supply so that all of us will end the year with hope and even begin next year with a confident expectation of good. That's right. So I feel faith rising up. Come on. I see some expectation yeah. going around this place. So let's get this show on the road. Yep. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready? Let's do that today. Come on, let's worship. Church, we're gonna say the greatest story was already told when you came to save me and made me your own. Before I even had a thought for you, come on, we sing together. A timeless sin of sacrifice, you took my place and gave me your life. And with the cross, my life has been restored From death to life Broken pieces you made whole From death to life Took my shackles, now I'm free A love so tender, a love so sweet and rescued me Bringing hope that shatters all my fears Come on, we say From death to life hey. Broken pieces you made hope From death to life Took my shackles, now I'm free From death to life Broken pieces you made hope from dead to life took my shackles now I'm free hey come on now hope is alive today do you believe that change from dead to life oh this is my story this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long Was lost but you found me Erased all my faults 
No, I live in freedom forevermore. Oh, this is my story and this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Was lost till you found me. Erase all my faults. No, I live in freedom forevermore. From death to life. Broken pieces you made whole. testimony we are alive amen so we're just gonna declare that again from death to life we are alive when this is my story this is my song sing it out church was lost but you found me raise all my faults now i live in This is my story and this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long What's lost when you found me, erase all my faults Now I live in freedom forevermore Oh, this is my story and this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long What's lost when you found me, erase all my faults Now I live in freedom forevermore You made hope from death to life. Took my shackles, now I'm free from death to life. Look at me, says you made hope from death to life. Took my shackles, now I'm free from death to life. Hold from death to life. Praise Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. All glory, all honor is yours, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just continue to worship God right now. Everyone who's in the house right now, you know, just connect with us. I believe the presence of God is with us right now. We thank you, Lord. Oh, your sweet, sweet presence in this place. Hallelujah. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name Come on, let's declare this This is a house of healing Our hearts are full of faith You have our full attention the final say come alive in the name of Jesus come alive in the name of Jesus this is a house of miracles we bring everything to the feet of Jesus everything in the name of Jesus this is a house of In the name of 
Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. Rise 
alive in us. Oh, cause you are alive in us. Jesus, you're alive in us. The hope of glory. Oh, the hope of glory. Jesus, we sing. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. One last time, let's declare. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Oh. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. hope in the name of Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love
2020 has been a <laughs> unprecedented year, crazy year. Many things have changed, many things, lives have been destroyed, many people are out of job. You know, the climate is just like depressing. But I believe as a body of Christ, I believe as a church, we have this awesome privilege. It's a privilege given by heaven to take our stand, not to cower in fear or to hide somewhere, but to take our stand, to take our stand and speak and declare what we want to see. We carry a message, we carry a person inside of us that is the answer to every heart's cry, to every problem that is all around. And His name is Jesus. And so I would like to encourage you, wherever you are right now, why not take a stand? Why not stand physically? Wherever you are, and as we're going to sing this song again, Take your stand by the authority of God as sons and as the body of Christ on the earth. Begin to declare, I speak Jesus in the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the world, Jesus in our families, Jesus in the government, Jesus in every mountain that is facing you today. I declare that there is power in your words as you declare the name that is above every name. And you know what happens? Heaven backs us up because we're not lifting up no other name, but we're lifting up the name. And His name, the Bible says, every knee should bow and every tongue will confess. Heaven on earth and under the earth will bow down to the name that is above every name. So I pray as we take this stand right now, we're going to sing it one more time. Take this prophetic stand and declare, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus carries life. A while ago, we were singing about miracles. You know why there are miracles? Because of life. That death is, life is stronger than any form of death. That is why when we speak Jesus, Jesus comes in and He carries life, He carries miracles. He carries healing. He carries provision. That is why today, let me encourage everyone who are watching right now this morning, stand up for where you are. Maybe you are seated, but let me ask you to stand up. And as we're declaring, declare with us. See what God sees. He wants to bring life to the people. He wants to bring life to the world. And that is only through His Son, Jesus. Are you ready? Let's do this, okay? Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street. Come on, declare it. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Come on. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Come on, everybody watching, just declare Jesus from the mountains. Now Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, we declare it. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Come on, faith rises up and hope is there. We declare it. Come on. Now Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Come on, body of Christ, declare one more time. One more time. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every For my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. 
Jesus. We declare, we declare the name. We declare your name, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We declare, we declare, Jesus. We declare your name. We declare, we declare, we declare. We declare your name. We declare, we declare. three say his name one two three Jesus 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 thank you Lord thank you Lord 
we declare your name. As the waters cover the sea, your glory fills the earth. Lord Jesus, we declare your name. Move, Lord, as we, your people, declare your name. In every heart, in every city, in every nation, we declare your name, oh Lord. For he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every bow and every knee shall bow every tongue confess that Jesus we declare your name we declare your name hope alive hope alive we declare it hallelujah thank you Jesus let's minister to the hearts of the people Lord God minister to your people Lord God right now we look to you and we bow our hearts before you. We de continue to declare that you are Lord. You are Lord. I thank you for miracles happening even right now. Wherever they are, miracles are happening, a transformation and change in the hearts of the people. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Maria. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really believe right now His power and His presence invading the atmosphere your atmosphere and wherever you are right now this is hope alive conference and the reason we can have hope alive is because of the living hope himself Jesus Christ Jesus Christ so I know that right now the praise and the worship has prepared your hearts to receive the word I love how prayer and praise and the worship just really causes our hearts to be able to be good ground to receive. And right now, it is our honor and our privilege. I, we can think of no better couple to actually open up this conference than our very dear senior pastors, Pastor Paul and Shadi Chase. So right now, get ready for a seasoned word. Get ready for a powerful word. Get ready for words that will stir you up, that will cause hope alive to come up in your hearts today. So right now, sit back, enjoy the word coming from our senior pastors, Pastor Paul and Sister Shadi. Hello to everyone. God bless you and welcome to Hope Alive Conference. I am excited to share with you the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. I pray that this time together will impact your life forever. That this moment in time, these words, collective words by Pastor and myself and Josel, Mylene, and all the, the speakers, the guest speakers will change your life. The meetings throughout the day will change your life. That is our hope and our desire 
That's why we have these conferences. So we can impart to you and praise God as we're imparting to you, the Spirit of God is imparting to us as well. So we're all here together, needing God, loving God, praising God, learning and growing in the grace and knowledge of God. So I am excited to take the next few moments and share what has been on my heart for all of you everywhere. I just want to take a moment and think who's out there, how precious you are, how important to God you are. Whatever you've been through, God is with you. The Lord is with you. Angels are with you. We are with you in prayer. We are with you declaring life and health and joy. What a strange year this has been. I don't know about your country of origin, what happened in that nation, but in the Philippines, we started 2020 with a volcano. We should have known then, uh-oh, we better pray because things are getting intense. But God is even more intense. God speaks to us. God encourages us. I remember when I just was saved years and years ago, I was at a conference. It was called Jesus. It was a Jesus rally outside with tents and speakers. And an elderly woman came out on the stage, much older than me. She must have been in her 80s. Her name was Corey Ten Boom. And as she was speaking, and a little background with her, she was a Holocaust survivor. She, by accident, quote unquote, or God's orchestration, amen, was released from one of the, the death camps. And as she's speaking on that stage, I was only 15 years old, 16 years old. In her message, she said this, one of the words she said, no matter what you go through, there is no pit so deep that God is not deeper still. Whew. Now I can say that, and I do say that, but with her backstory of saying that, how deep is our God? How powerful is our God? He does not just come into our situation. He girds us. He comes in. He goes deeper than the situation and holds us in his hand. So I'm, again, thrilled to be here with you and to impart some of this beautiful glory and grace of God. No, we're not in an auditorium, hugging each other. But nonetheless, we are together in Christ. And everything we do, may you have an encounter with the Lord. I pray that throughout this day, there will be visitation because we ask God for that. Well, this conference, as you know, Hope Alive, pastors Josel and Mylene really felt it in their heart as as this is knitted and orchestrated throughout the world, churches doing, declaring the word hope, declaring hope, declaring love, declaring this aspect of our God, declaring no matter what, we are here for you. God is here for you. We were going to, Pastor Paul and I, well, he might still speak to you outside, but it's so cold. And I was all bundled up and ready to go outside. And then the wind was crazy. I said, Paul, pastor, if I have an option, I'm going to be roasty, toasty, and warm inside the house. You can freeze. But I was going to use it as a metaphor, maybe he can, that even though the wind is very cutting, even though times and things you go through can be horrible. I know by God's divine creation that the storm will change, that the cutting cold will cease. Because why do I know that? Well, number one, I'm in Florida. And, and when we get a, a cold front like this, it doesn't stay. So I know that by the geography, I know that by Florida, the state I'm in, by its, its pattern of weather, its location to the equator, 
it dictates the weather here. But you know, the word of God dictates also that no matter what storm I go through, no matter the, the biting betrayal, no matter what hopelessness many feel, and I pray as I'm speaking to the brethren, the believers, the, the precious blood-washed atoned <laughs> saints of God, that you are never hopeless. Though you might feel the wind and the waves and the vehement anger of political systems, you might feel these things. And amen, we do. But we know our house is built upon the Lord Jesus Christ. We have dug deep and we're digging deeper still. What we're doing today is digging deep. And when we come to him, we hear his words and we do them. We are considered by the Lord Jesus Christ as a wise person who built his house upon the rock. And when, not if, but when all these storms come, our hope is in Christ that we will not fall into ruin. Praise be unto God and we shall not fall into ruin. Well, hope is alive because Jesus is alive. He is our hope. Now, the word hope, let's just do a little word study here. The word hope in the Greek, Greek is elbis. And it means to anticipate, usually for pleasure. Anticipate that meal. Anticipate with joy something about to happen. As a noun, it means favorable, confident expectation. Hallelujah. Favorable, confident expectation. Where does that come from? Not the world. It comes from God, comes from Christ. Everything by Christ, in Christ, for Christ, through Christ. Everything comes from the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the movements of the Holy Spirit, the orchestration of our sovereign God, that this hope that comes from God, it is not a hope like the world, though, praise God, when you feed people and you speak encouraging words, a sinner can do that too, praise God, because it's within our soul. All created beings can impart hope, and we must, and we do. But then there's this divine hope. It's the breath of God upon any situation, favorable and confident expectation, a forward look, a forward look with assurance. Woo! Now that gets me excited because I know that involves every precious promises of God, every great and precious promise of God. Elvis refers to the future and the unseen, such as in Romans 8, 24 and 25. For we were saved in this hope. Our salvation is hope. Our life is trusting God. We hope with, with beautiful expectation of his promises and his presence to be revealed. I hope in that. And it's not, well, I don't know. I'm hoping. No, I hope in all the promises of God that is favorable and confident expectation. When I prayed or when I said all of us, all of you shall have an encounter I know that because we're declaring his name like that beautiful song. It is the name of Jesus. It's speaking his name. And within his name is, is faith and hope and love and mercy and all the attributes and all the, the pronouns and all the adjectives. Everything is described in, in the scriptures that our God is great and merciful. And he is our provider, which gives me hope. He is my forgiver and redeemer that brings me hope. He forgives me. He restores my soul. All of that is hope alive. My situation is not hopeless 
because God is hope. So praise God in Romans 8, 24, 25, it says, for we are saved in this hope, but hope that is not seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Whoa, you see faith and hope, we hope for, and then we live in the promises of God. Hope is a constant thermostat. It's keeping all things calm. Hope keeps everything working toward the prayed petition. Hope steadies me. Hope for the future, knowing all shall be well because I serve a living God. Now, hope commonly is used to like, I hope all goes well with you, like wishing somebody something. Its strength is the strength of a person's desire. That's more of a natural hope. I do hope you have a good life, of course. But in the Bible, hope is the confident, as I said, expectation of what God has promised. So hope is heavier and more glorious and deeper than we might have considered it before. What, it's the expectation of what God has promised and its strength. Where does hope's strength rest? In God's faithfulness. These are, this is the language of the Bible. These are the words of the Bible. These are holy words, powerful words. These are the precepts. These are the decrees of the word of God. This is the theme and the theology of the word of God. Praise be unto his name. Every time we sing, as we started this conference with these beautiful songs of worship and praise and declaring what he has done and what he is going to do because we hope in his word. We have great expectation in his word. And that is our hope. We have hope in the atonement and that we have hope when we read the scriptures because we have believed that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You know, when uh, the disciples came back from casting out the devils in, in Luke 10, and they said, wow, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan fall from heaven like lightning. But don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Hope from the beginning of the Bible to the end. That my expectation, my joy, my assurance and confidence comes from the scriptures that declare I am redeemed for I have believed in God's son. And whatever happens here in my life on earth, that God is with me, for me, in me, angels surround me, and I will praise my king. Hope heralds praise. Hope, a person of hope, heralds encouragement. But the one who is sad and feeling hopeless, we impart to them. We do that, yes, by our prayers. We do that by many avenues, but going out into our cities and touching people and bringing them food or clothing, blankets, whatever you can do. If you have no money to do that, you you tell people about the love of God. Of course, we do all of that, but then there's a certain time that love must be shown by an embrace or by food or by something. And that is God. God God is always showing himself strong to us. And we in turn are always showing the love of God in, in action to others. So what is the strength of hope? His faithfulness. Hope is in every verse of the Bible. It is in every message of the Bible. Hope is God's doing. 
It is his giving to us. His mercy, hope and mercy, faithfulness and love all work together. Hope springs forth from the throne of grace where we are called and beckoned to come and to come boldly. And when we're at the throne of grace, we never leave the way, the same way we came. If we came wounded or hurt, we leave filled, we leave full, we leave redeemed. Well, you are redeemed, but restored because the place of God always has his presence and his presence always comes and heals. Praise the Lord forever. So every, every page speaks forth hope. Every verse, every theme of the Bible, hope is God's and it's a gift. Like all gifts, we boast not in it that it's ours. It's his that we are expressing, amen. Hope springs forth, as I said, from the throne of grace. Hope springs forth from atonement, from every page of the word of God, every parable, every chapter echoes out. God loves us and is with us. He will redeem us. God will take care of us as we seek him. That is hope. Hope echoes out, you are not alone. I will read a verse here that I just love. And I wanted to play the song, but we're not allowed to play um, full songs. So I want to read some scriptures about this song because, again, every verse, every theme of the Bible is hope. Is no matter how you feel, cry out to God and he will come to you. Glory, glory to God. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. This is the New King James Version. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. Woo, that gives me hope. Not the governments of the world, and though I pray for them and I pray for our leaders, but God's governing power and God's governing precepts and decrees are what keep us well, not only sane, but order in this world. We are the salt and the light as he is the light. Bringing order, his name, the moment we speak his name, something glorious is happening. And the government will be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful. Well, that brings me hope. Counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Well, I just want to praise his name and shout hallelujah because saying those descriptive words of my God, he's not only judge of all the earth, which he is, and I love that. For some, that's scary. That brings me hope that God judges all things. Oh, he is glorious and all his acts are glorious. Though our situation may not feel glorious, but hope in God, my friend, hope that God and his word, his spirit moves and we wait on him and we love him. For unto us a child is born. This is the entire message of the of the bible from start to finish it's the red thread of redemption it's all about jesus it's all about coming to us it's all about the son and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace and of his increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Ooh, there will be no end. One day there will be no end. <laughs> we will live in the eternal realm of his glory, grace, and we will not be on earth, on earth being ambassadors and diffusing the fragrance of the knowledge of God. That is our mission now, but we will be forever with him in, in the presence of God. 
even as discouraging as political systems and the world can be, look up and remember God is with us. And we are called pilgrims and all of us are called foreigners here. And we are here for a moment in time to bring forth his beauty, grace, and salvation to mankind to declare what Jesus has already brought forth. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Well, that gives me hope, just reading the word, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, forever glory to God and the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He is performing his word. You know, when circumstances come in like this storm and you're overwhelmed, I'll tell you what, my friend, worshiping God will overwhelm what's overwhelming you. Speaking his name overwhelms and subdues the enemy. Speaking his name and praising the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords overwhelms the depression, overwhelms and flattens the scheme of the enemy. Proclaim the goodness of God. Sing out, even in all your tears. If you're so depressed you can't get out of bed, okay. Sing in your depression and watch what God will do. His name is glorious. He is wonderful. He is the mighty one. He is the counselor. He is the everlasting father and the prince of peace. Woo, that brings me hope. As I read these scriptures to you, I pray that everyone touches you, heals you, delivers you, imparts the glory and grace and the breath of God as they were written, must have been there. For it is the inspired word of God, is the breath. For all scripture is God-breathed. So as I speak the God-breathed word, may the breath of God come into your room and as you hear, miracles will happen. In 1 Timothy 1, 1 through 2, it says, an, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the commandment of our God and Savior and of Jesus Christ, who is our hope, to Timothy, my true child in, in the face, grace and mercy and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What a way to start a letter. What a way. What a way to start your day. What a way to start anything with according to the commandment of our God and Savior and Jesus Christ, who is our hope? Who is our hope? Hope is not only a subject as we know that, Jesus is our hope. Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.10, for it is for this we labor and strive because we have fixed our hope on the living God. We have fixed our hope there. My, where is your hope fixed? That, oh, my boss might give me a raise. Well, that's a prayer and that's a concern. Or where is my hope fixed? Remember, hope is where's your expectation, your confident expectation, your knowing there's favorable expectations and mercies to come your way. We hope in God. I pray God speak to my boss. I pray God speak to those who can aid and help my life, of course, but my hope is fixed on Jesus. Fixed, you know, the word fixed is almost robotic sounding. I'm, my eyes are fixed. I am programmed to look to him first God is my hope. Christ is my hope. And Apostle Paul opens his letter this way to Timothy and to the church that our labor and what we do, we do because of all of the word of God, yes, and what we are commissioned to proclaim. 
but our hope is fixed on the living God. Anchored, stationary, stationed, bolted in, fixed on the living God. Romans 5, 2, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. So the full counsel of God weaves faith and hope and passion and commitment. And all of it is meshed together, fixing our eyes on God. And it's all about hope, hoping in him. Romans 15, 4, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our, our instruction, that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Wow. Now let's look at that verse. Let's ingest it. Let's take a moment, get a sip of your coffee, and think about that verse. Romans 15, 4 says, and I love context, and we could read all of it, and you should, because context, context, context matters. Romans 15, 4 says this, for whatever was written, Remember, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable. All scripture is inspired. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for correction, rebuke, instruction. All of our theology, all of the themes of God that the man of God may grow and the man of God may be mature. Hallelujah, man or woman of God. And it says here, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. No, we are not Old Testament believers anymore. We're in a new covenant, but the scriptures are holy and to be studied. For we see the hand of God move and we never place them in a, in a, in a basement or say, well, they're not needed. We read all the word of God understanding of course we are not under the law we are under grace and we are in the new covenant but the the word of god in its entirety is a message for all of us though we are as i said new covenant believers but it says all things written even in earlier times they were written for our instruction that through perseverance and encouragement of what? Perseverance and encouragement of the scriptures. We might have hope. So you shall have hope from prayer. Amen. You will be infused with hope from worship. You can have hope from the encouragement of others. Praise God. But when you can find hope in the scriptures, you will never, never feel hopeless because the scriptures are alive. Why is hope alive? Because the word of God is alive. Christ is alive. His word is not like over there and we just need his presence. His word is everything. His, you cannot separate it. He is the living word. He is God and he speaks and his words are holy and his words bring hope alive. Praise be unto God. I'll end with this. I'll end with this. It's such a beautiful verse again in Romans, Romans 15. You know, Romans is a book about hope alive because it's about our righteousness imputed to us, given to us, accounted to us because of faith. So when Abraham believed and it was accounted to him as righteousness, when you believe you are made righteous, 
glory to God. So the whole book is about hope. The whole book starts out with how hopeless man and the condition of man, and then how faithful our God is to redeem us. Praise be unto the Lord. Romans 15, 13, and then I'll, I'll end with this. I'll close. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy. Now, if you are a believer and you understand hope, you're going to have some joy. So now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you, my friends. The Lord take all of your anxiety and free you. I have to move my scarf here is falling down. <laughs> you know, we just got like out my scarf. But may the Lord free you from all depression, worry and fear, because hope alive, hope in Christ, he is alive. And his breath is hope, his, his graciousness is hope. And I fix my, my eyes on him, my faith on him. And yes, we have tears, we have moments where great tears fall. Well, may the Lord Take these few verses that I've shared and this encouragement that I've shared and touch your life. I have so much more to share here, but I have to be generous and share the time uh, with my honey, which I am um, privileged to do. So I'll talk to you later. And let me just pray over you, okay? Paul, will you come here, baby? I wanna pray over the people. I wanna pray over you and together, we stand with you. We thank you, Lord God, that no matter what people are going through, that you are alive. And because you are alive, hope is alive. We speak to those who are depressed and filled with fear and anxious that the spirit of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God would flood into your life as, the, as chaos might have flooded into your life. Oh, but God raises up a standard. He is so great. He will lift you high as we pray right now that hope and mercy in this moment, no more discouragement because God is alive and hope is alive. Would you pray some more over the people, honey? Praise you, Jesus. Father, we thank you <clears throat> that our hope is in a person and his name is Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. And that he is the same yesterday, today, and yes, forever. Yes. And from Genesis to Revelation, we see the character of God revealed of your faithfulness and your goodness. From then until now, Praise your faithfulness you. endures from generation to generation to generation. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you that we will taste and we will see mm. that the Lord is good. I thank you for an invasion in people's situation Praise and circumstances Jesus. bringing peace bringing wholeness bringing strength bringing courage and causing their faith to be alive because of the hope that you have Praise sustained you, in their hearts and we thank you for that in jesus name god Amen. bless you god bless you shadi and i are so glad to be with all of you in the hope alive conference today and share the time together with the other wonderful speakers our hearts desire even as we just finished praying for you and the words that we minister to you is to help build a security and a strength and establish uh, uh, a, a solid anchor in your life uh, because life is filled with unexpected, unkind, unnecessary, unwanted, and sometimes ugly things that come to us and we need a stability, we need a strength, we need something that's stable, that holds us steady to any adversity that comes our way. It doesn't come out of our own strength, it doesn't come out of our own wisdom, it doesn't come out of the arm of the flesh or the great educational attainment that you may uh, have accomplished through many years of study. It comes from having a living hope and a faith in a person 
and his name is Jesus. No matter what comes your way, there will be things in life that are beyond your ability, beyond your strength, beyond your own wisdom, your talents, your giftings, your position, or your finances. But there is nothing that is beyond the ability of God because he is all-knowing, he's ever-present, and he's all-powerful. And when you and I will hold on to that and realize that our hope, as we are in this Hope Alive conference, that your hope will stay alive as long as it's focused on the one who is alive, not past traditions or, or vain philosophies, but a living hope and trust and confidence and relying upon a person whose name is Jesus. Ashanti was inside. Uh, I moved outside. This is not a virtual background. It's uh, our backyard here, and uh, it is a little cold. And uh, But I'm so glad to be with you. Wish I we could do this all in person, but it's nice that we have this, uh, the videos that we can send. And I pray that the words that we, that Shadi shared with you, a wonderful message, and then some verses that I just want to remind you of. I'm sure most of the verses that I share with you are not verses that you've not heard before. Uh, most of the problem is that we... Uh, it's not that we haven't heard things, it's that we forget things. You know, the Bible says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Forget not all his benefits. Forget not who he is. Forget not what he has planned for us. And so today I want to bring you to remembrance of, of some things that I pray that will reestablish uh, a living hope and a solid faith and a confidence and, and rebuild a, a faith and a trust and uh, cause your courage to come alive in the things that you face today. I want to begin with, I'm sure, a verse that everybody refers to. It's probably quoted more uh, nowadays than any time we've heard recently, and that's Jeremiah 29, 11 in the Amplified, actually verses 11 to 13. It says, for I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you. It's very important for you and I to know the plans and the thoughts. I like that. Plans and thoughts. It's not that God just has a thought. He has a plan. I know the plans and thoughts I have for you, says the Lord, plans of peace and well-being, not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear your voice, and I will listen to you. Then with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity, and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I believe it's so valuable to add verses 12 and 13 in there when the Lord says, you will call on me, you, you will come, you will pray to me, and I will hear, and I will listen. And then with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity. Listen, for our hope to be alive, it is a vital necessity that we draw to the Lord. As we draw near to him, he draws near to us. And the result of that is you and I become aware of God's plans and God's thoughts, that it is for your peace, it is for your well-being, it is for your security, it is for your wholeness, it is for your present, and it is for your future, having uh, removed the shame, the guilt, the condemnation of your past, having redeemed your life from destruction, but he, had, he has good plans for your present and for your future. What we see from this verse is that hope for your future is a gift from God, and it comes with you becoming aware, receiving, and believing in the plans and the thoughts of peace and well-being that God has for you. <clears throat> God's thoughts for us, his will, and his plans for us, his purpose for us, it's all good. Two things that are foundational uh, and have been foundational for Sister Shadi and I and uh, over 40 years of living in Asia, the Philippines, and ministry, and, and, and the entire time that uh, I've known the Lord, two foundational truths that have always brought us stability and brought us strength in our lives, no matter what we've 
uh, faced that have helped us to remain rooted, established, stable, and anchored is that God is good and that God is faithful. I believe to me, faithfulness is probably one of the greatest attributes of God. And I combine that with his goodness. I combine that with his power. I combine that with his mercy because the fact that he's stable, he's reliable, he's dependable, he's unchanging, is that his faithfulness is from generation to generation, unto a thousand generation, that his mercy endures forever. That he's not only good, but he's faithfully good. He's not just good today, but he's good tomorrow and the next day and the next week and the next month and the next year and the next generation that he does not change. Malachi, Malachi says, I am the Lord God and I change not. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you and I can lay hold of that, two facts, that he's good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever for the Lord is good and that he's faithful. In uh, Psalms 37, verse three through five, it says, trust, rely on, and have confidence in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed securely on his faithfulness. Feed on the faithfulness of God. When you feed on the faithfulness of God, it's something that you bring into you. It's just like eating. It's you, you make it a part of you. You feed on the fact that he's faithful, that he's reliable, that he's dependable. Not one word of his promise has ever failed you. I know people have failed you. People have failed me. People in all their greatest intentions and their promises can desire to do good, but sometimes circumstances are beyond their control or they, they change. But God does not change, and he's always good, and he's faithful to his word. One of the wonderful things that we see that actually is impossible for God, you say, well, that nothing is impossible for God. Yeah, there's something that's impossible for God. The Bible says it impossible. It is impossible that God can lie. He cannot. It's not that he chooses not to. It's that it is impossible for him to lie. So when you have the truth of his word, when that word comes alive in your heart, renewing your mind, helping to change the way you think, bringing a transformation, when that truth comes alive on the inside of you and becomes a rock, an anchor to your soul, and you realize that once you have that word, he cannot lie. And that word becomes a stability. It becomes a strength. It causes a courage to stay alive in your life. And it gives you a living hope to hang on to that when things look dark, when the wind is blowing, when the waves are pounding, his word is true. And that's why in all of the teaching that we have, it's not so much how wonderfully we communicate the word. It's the word itself that you remember. The word that is alive in your heart, the word that's working in your mind, transforming and renewing your mind for your head to think in line with your heart. That's what causes your hope to be alive. It says, rely on, have confidence in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed securely on his faithfulness. Feed on the faithfulness of God. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way into the Lord. Trust also in him. I talked about the goodness of God in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the devil. When you look at the life of Jesus, everywhere he went, he brought life. He brought hope that my life can change. My life doesn't have to stay this way. I'm not stuck in this situation, no matter how impossible it looks, as if nothing can turn my situation around, where people have betrayed me, disappointed me, walked out on me, let me down. Jesus will never let you down. The Bible says whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. There will not be disappointment. 
if things have not worked out in your life, if, if things haven't happened the way maybe you have desired them to or expected them to, let's go back to the truth of God's word. Not what you've heard from somebody else, but the truth of God's word is that he does not fail. He cannot fail. His word does not fail. And he's faithful to his word. And whatever he does is good. I want to encourage you today as we are in this Hope Alive conference to cause your hope to come alive and stay alive is feed on the faithfulness of his word, that God is faithful to his word. And if you look at the life of Jesus, you will see everywhere that he went, he was always doing good, whether it was healing, whether it was forgiving, whether it was providing, whether it was delivering, everything that he did brought hope and brought change into people's lives. That has not changed. We are not here to provide the world with uh, slick, polished messages that soothe uh, or uh, influence our soul. We are here to communicate a word that's empowering and alive by the spirit that brings transformation in the heart, renews the mind, and there's power to perform in our daily lives. Romans chapter 10, verse 11 says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. There's no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich, is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, the word saved there is an all-inclusive word. It means uh, the word salvation is wholeness. It means to be made whole. It is, it is not just the forgiveness of sins. It is the wholeness of your body. It's the complete work that was accomplished through, the, through redemption, through the death, burial, and resurrection. It is you and I becoming whole, spirit, soul, and body. So whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and who bring glad tidings of good things, good things. Everybody that's speaking from Sister Shadi, myself, and, and all the rest of the speakers, and everybody that you're going to hear in the streams is to communicate a word that's going to bring good things into your life, that's going to cause hope to come alive. And when hope comes alive, then faith begins to work. And when faith begins to work, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. And some things look absolutely impossible. And that's why we have the God part in the equation. When Mary was talking to Gabriel, when she says, how can this possibly be? How could I uh, become pregnant? I haven't been with a man. And, and not, not, not only am I going to become pregnant, uh, but you're telling me that this is going to be the son of God. How, how can this be? And he says, well, with man, it's impossible. There are some things with man alone it's just flat out impossible. It's not going to happen. But then Gabriel added this, excuse the wind in my hair here. But then Gabriel added uh, the reality of the word to the situation. But with God, all things are possible. You see, when you bring God into the equation, the impossible becomes the, uh, becomes the possible. A conversation with a virgin resulting in a pregnancy, that's really kind of impossible, but not when you bring God into the equation. I don't know what your situation is now that seems to be impossible. And there are a lot of things uh, just it, with your strength and my strength and your ability and my ability that actually is impossible. But when we bring God into the equation, the impossible becomes possible because with you and I alone, just our abilities, our strengths, our wisdom, maybe your good looks, your standing, your finances, still some things are going to be impossible. But with God, nothing will be impossible. So when we bring God into the equation and then we bring the, bring the trusting, the relying upon his word, and you and I uh, begin to believe that Jesus said, 
All things are possible to those who believe. That's why we take the time to share these words with you, to bring you from a place of hope into a place of believing, into a place of receiving. And so the impossible becomes possible. And any situation that God steps into can turn around. Whatever situation you're in right now, God can turn it around. Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified Classic, uh, I, I love this verse. It's foundational. It's just a part of my life, so I'm obviously going to share this with you today. It says, we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. So wherever you're at, however you feel, the truth of God's word uh, still exists. It's still true in your situation, regardless of your emotions, regardless of the thoughts or the worries, the fears, the anxieties in your mind. You are God's handiwork. You are his workmanship, whether you feel like it or not. These words are true. You are recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew. That not only did Jesus do good works, but he also created you for some good works. He wants you to be involved with his plans and his purposes because he has something wonderful for your life. He not only wants to do things in you, he wants to do things with you, and he wants to do things through you. You were created for good works, which God predestined, planned beforehand. Taking path, which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them. You see, it goes back to Jeremiah 29, 11, when God says, listen, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you. I have a plan for you, and, and it's good. It's not bad. It's, it's to give you a hope. It's to affect your future. See, my plans are beyond uh, the present. They're going to take you into a future. They give you direction. And in that direction, wherever I, I, I lead, wherever I guide, I always provide. You will find the provision of God in the direction of God. You will find that provision with his direction. And it's always good. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. The young lions do hunger and suffer lack, but those who worship the Lord, those who seek the Lord, shall not lack any good thing. Taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Your life may not look good right now. It may not feel good right now, but God has prepared a good life for you, a life with peace a life with purpose, a life that, that has power in it because of the presence, not only of his word, but of his spirit. You are not to live powerless. You are not to live without wisdom or knowledge or understanding or counsel or might. You see, that is the person of the Holy Spirit in your life, which you'll, uh, Isaiah chapter 11 talks about the spirit of the Lord, who is a spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and counsel and might. That spirit lives on the inside of you. So you can pull from wisdom from above. The Bible says wisdom from above is pure and peaceable and gentle and easy to be received. So you can pull from above or you can draw from within. Spirit of wisdom that lives on the inside of you. Counsel that lives on the inside of you. To lead and direct you in this path that he has prearranged and made ready for you to live. That God has a good plan for your life. What I read earlier in Romans chapter 10, the Bible says that God is rich to those who call upon him. The reason that we uh, share all these verses with you is to bring an awareness to cause hope to be alive because you will not call in air on, on God in areas where you don't believe. Where you begin to believe, you'll begin to call. And when you begin to call, he is rich. And, and we want you to call on him in any and every area of your life, no matter how small it may seem, nothing is insignificant to him concerning your life, concerning your relationships uh, with people in your family, concerning your health, concerning your future, concerning your peace, concerning your strength, concerning your courage, concerning your convictions. Nothing is small or insignificant to him. He cares about every aspect of your life. If you want to see the richness of God poured into your life, 
then get an awareness of his word that applies to every aspect of your life. That's what causes your hope to come alive, that God cares about this area of my life, and he cares about this area of my life. He cares about my, not only my eternity, but he cares about my, my temporary. He cares about me physically, emotionally, uh, mentally, financially. He cares about my marriage. He cares about my family. He cares about my kids, and he cares about my peace. Jesus said, I, I came to give you a peace that, that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. You and I can only have that kind of peace when it's established because of a, the Prince of Peace and that person that brings peace in our life because he causes our hope to come alive. And he not only causes it to come alive, but he sustains it in our life. My hope is alive because of the source of my hope. And that's a person, and his name is Jesus. His word alive in my heart, constantly being uh, renewing uh, my mind, the spirit of God present in my life, empowering me with a presence and a peace. It's not just words that you try to remember. It's a person. It's a person who's alive. His spirit is alive on the inside of you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And sometimes we're, we're more convinced by our emotions or our circumstances or what we see or we feel. That's why everybody uh, refers to this story. Uh, I refer to it a lot. I, I guess it helps me to, um, it just brings a peace to me. When Jesus and the, and the disciples were in the boat crossing the Sea of Galilee and the storm came up, we all go through storms. And they were convinced they were going to die because of what they saw, what they felt. They saw the darkness of the clouds. They saw the waves. They felt the wind. They're getting wet. So now they're convinced to what they see and feel, we're going to die. And because what we see and feel becomes more real to us than what we believe begins to get overshadowed, and we get convinced by outward circumstances uh, that the inward conviction of our heart maybe isn't so true. So they go to Jesus and they wake him up and they tell him, don't you care that we're going to die? Too many times in our situations, we are convinced that maybe God doesn't care. And when we get convinced that God doesn't care, we forget that he's good. We forget that he's faithful. See, the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. When I understand that I have a loving heavenly father, when I understand that when I see even Jesus, when he's in the garden praying in John chapter 17, one of the things that he's praying about is, Father, let them know that you love them like you love me. I have a heavenly father that loves me without reservation. I have a heavenly father that loves me so much that he gave his only son to redeem me. I have a heavenly father that loves me with a perfect love. And when I have an understanding of that love, for me, the height and the width and the length and the depth of that love that he has for me that is beyond knowledge, it will replace the fear. It will replace the anxiety and cause not only hope to come alive, but stay alive and abound in my life. I think every one of us has gone to Jesus at times in our prayers. And we, when we were praying, it was more like a whine. And Lord, don't you care? Don't you care about what's happening to me physically? Don't you care what's happening to me emotionally? Don't you care what's happening to me financially? I mean, look at my job, look at my family, look at my, my relationship, look at my marriage, look at my kids, look at, look at my health. And he sees and he knows, but he does care. Lord, don't you care that we're going to die? I mean, look at the circumstances that we're presently in. And what happened is the circumstance of the storm, the pressure of the storm, the wetness of the storm, the wind of the storm, became more real to them than the Jesus in their boat. Hope Alive Conference is for us to remind you who's in your boat with you, that your Christianity is not the mere acknowledging of just truths you try to live by. It is the reality of a relationship that you've become one with him, that you're in him and he's in you, and he will never leave you. He will not forsake you, and that his word is true. When it's raining, it's true. When it's storming, it's true. When there's waves against the boat, it's true. That's why whoever hears these words 
of mine and does them and, and applies them is a wise man. I pray that in this Hope Alive, Hope Alive conference that every one of us continue to awaken to the wisdom we need to walk in, to be doers of the word that we hear. Because a wise man is a doer of the word. And when we do that, <clears throat> we build our house upon a rock. We establish our life upon the faithfulness and the truth of God's word. So when the rain comes, when the stream builds up and it beats against our house, when it begins to beat against our life, we stand because we're anchored, we're solid, we're established, we're founded on the goodness of God and the faithfulness of his word. And one of the reasons that you and I need, be, need to be strong and established and abounding in hope is because you and I are a light to many others who are drenched, beat up, wounded, their houses have collapsed and they're beginning to float down the river. And as they float by, they see someone standing solid, secure, in peace, with joy, no fear, and courage and conviction that does not bow. And when they see that, we become a light in the midst of people's darkness. And we are there to rescue and help restore and rebuild that which has been broken and shattered and damaged in other people's lives. Hope Alive is not just for you and I to uh, survive, it's for us to thrive. Hope Alive isn't just for you and I to overcome, it's for us as overcomers to be a living testimony, to reach and touch our generation and to be a voice that brings strength to those around us. With all the messages that have been coming out in uh, concern in the last couple of Sundays and New Life, just absolutely wonderful messages about your thoughts. I'll go to this, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to pulling down strongholds, casting down uh, arguments, vain imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Listen, you got to bring your thoughts into captivity. If you don't bring your thoughts captive, your thoughts will bring you captive. Don't allow anything to be exalted above the truth of God's word in your mind. It's very important that you renew your mind and begin to change the way you think. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Allow nothing in your mind to be exalted by the truth of who he is and who you are. Remember, there's, there's, there's two sides of revelation that's important in your life. When Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? He said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, which is in heaven. That's revelation for, for Peter to see and understand who Jesus is. But that's only one side of it. And Jesus says, and I say unto you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Do we know that the revelation knowledge of who Jesus is, is the rock and the foundation that the church is built upon? But what Jesus did, he says, okay, I, you see clearly who I am. And I want you to understand clearly how I see you and who you are to me. See, it's one thing to see who Jesus is to us. It's another thing to see who we are to him. That's what causes your hope to come alive, stay alive, and to abound. Don't allow lies to continue to stay in your head. Truth brings liberty. It brings peace, it brings freedom, it brings confidence, it brings courage, it brings boldness, it brings vision, it brings hope, and it brings faith. Lies bring bondage, fear, anxiety, shame, guilt, uncertainty, doubt, and confusion. It's my prayer that in every message that you hear in these two days and in the streams, that peace and joy and strength and courage and faith and hope is coming alive in your hearts and minds. I have a verse I want to share with you as I get ready to wrap this up. One of my favorite verses on hope, it's just a phenomenal verse. In Job chapter 14, verse 7 through 9, it shows this the extreme power of what God's word can do and what hope can bring into a life. It says, for there is hope for a tree if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its root may grow old in the earth 
and its stump may die in the ground. Now, that, that looks pretty bad. The tree is cut down. Its tender shoots says will not cease. Even though its roots have grown old in, in the earth and the stump may die in the ground. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. That's hope. When it looks absolutely hopeless, when it seems like there is no way, never remove the God factor in your situation. Never remove the God equation coming in to invade your situation. How many times in the Bible do we see miracles, a divine intervention in natural circumstances when it looks hopeless? Or we see something ha that has never happened before, or we look at it and go, how could this possibly be? Feeding of multitude, of the multitudes, turning water into wine, walking on water, separating the ocean for the children of Israel, multiplying oil for a widow so she can pay her bills and then have plenty to live on, or how about the multiplying of the uh, flour and the oil for a widow who's gathering sticks to cook her last meal and die? How many different miracles do we need to see where throughout the Old Testament or the New Testament? where when God comes into the scene, situation turns around. How about when <clears throat> Joshua is fighting a battle and he prays for the sun to stand still and the moon to cease, the moon also to stand still? What kind of a crazy prayer is that? In fact, some of you, if you'll go back and read Jeremiah 29, 11, it's pretty crazy when... Uh, Oh, wait, no, that's not Jeremiah. That's where I'm going in, in, <clears throat> in Isaiah. This next story. In turning hopeless situations around, Hezekiah was sick. Second Kings chapter 20. I'll try and close with this. Second Kings chapter 20, verse 1. <clears throat> in those days, <clears throat> Hezekiah was sick near death. <clears throat> And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. <clears throat> Isaiah the prophet comes to you, you're the king, and says this, Thus says the Lord, you're going to die and you will not live. Game over. Hopeless situation says, and then he turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember, O Lord, I pray how I've walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court. See, Isaiah comes in to deliver a word from the Lord. I mean, he says, thus says the Lord, you're going you're gonna to die. <laughs> you're not going to live. I guess right there, you just give up and say, oh, well. But Hezekiah did not. That's what we're wanting to encourage you today. Don't give up. Don't quit. Quitting's not an option in your life. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Thus says the Lord God. The Lord, the God of your father, David, I've heard your prayers and I've seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord and I will add to you 15 more years. What did he do? He turned his face to the wall. Maybe you need to turn your face away from everybody else. Maybe you need to turn your face away from Facebook unless you're watching uh, the conference on Facebook or YouTube. Maybe you need to stop the social media because it's, it's not everything on social media that's going to cause your hope to come alive. In fact, a lot of things on social media, the news or, or the opinions of people is what's going to steal your hope. It's what's going to damage uh, your hope. The Bible says that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, 
turned his face away from everybody else, and he began to cry out. Let me encourage you, as we read in Jeremiah, where God says, listen, I know my thoughts towards you that are good and not evil to give you a hope and a future. My plans for you, they're good for your well-being, to establish you, to strengthen you. And then after that, it says, you will come to me and you'll pray to me and seek me with all your heart. And I will listen, I will hear you and I will listen to you. You will seek me as a vital necessity. Sometimes there is no other place to turn to. Don't make God the last resort in your life. Make him your first. No, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. We Listen, if you will seek the face of God, you will see the hand of God move. Too many times we just want to use our faith because of things we want to see God do on our behalf. It's not the hand that you just want to always see working in your life. But if you'll seek his face, you'll get all of him. Seek him with all of your heart. When you pray, he'll listen. Hezekiah just heard a word from Isaiah the prophet, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament. And he delivered a word that could have caused him to give up and quit. But Hezekiah turned his face away from the prophet, away from the man, and away from everybody else. And maybe you're in a situation right now and you don't know where to turn. You don't know where to look. Let me, let me tell you what will cause your hope to come alive. Is when you get your face towards his face. When you take your face and you put it in his word. When you look to him. When you want to hear from heaven. When you need to hear from the Spirit of God, what you will find is hope. What you will find is mercy. What you will find are the plans and the thoughts that God has towards you when it looks absolutely hopeless. There's always hope in Him. Let me tell you, your courage, your strength will come when you turn your face towards Him. There is no hopeless situation. There is no situation that is bigger or beyond Him. It's my prayer, and I know that we are in some hard times. I know that the world has been locked down. People have been shut, shut down. We've been locked out. We've been uh, put away from people. We haven't been able to gather. Businesses have closed. Financial situations, e e all kinds of emotional and challenging times have come to us. But God is greater. And you and I live in a time where we can look to him and trust him and rely upon him. And faith in him, whoever calls on the Lord will not be put to shame, will not be disappointed. It's my prayer for you today that your hope come alive, that your hope is in him. Not just words on a piece of paper, but a person, a person that brings peace, a person that provides, a person that heals, that restores, that loves you, that you are loved today and that God's plans for you are good. Let me pray for you. Father, again, I thank you for everybody that's watching today. I thank you for your word that comes alive in their life. I thank you that in their situation, whatever country or city they're in, whatever financial, physical, or emotional situation they're in, that you invade their situation. That they do not forget the God equation in the entire situation. That with with man, some things are impossible. But with you, nothing, nothing is impossible. And all things are possible to those who believe. That's trusting, that's relying, that's having faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Cause a living hope to come alive in the hearts and minds of every man and woman that's watching. Life, my situation, can, will change. The Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Father, I come against sickened hearts, that hope that is delayed, that is cast aside, that is let go of, will not be a part of our life, that we will not allow our hope to be deferred. We will not allow it to be cast aside because our hope is in a person, and his name is Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the continued words that come through the rest of the speakers and every stream that people are encouraged in great 
in wonderful ways. I thank you for miracles. We believe in the miraculous. We believe in divine intervention. We believe in the working of your word and your spirit, your presence, your peace, and your provision in every area of our life, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you for the men and women, their homes, their families, their businesses, and all that they put their hand to. I thank you that every one of them is like a tree planted by the river of water. Their leaf will not wither. They will bear fruit in due season. Whatever they do will prosper because of who you are in our life. Thank you for that, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you. I'm sorry for the noise, the sun, the wind, and hair that's standing up in the breeze, but it's a joy to be with you. We love you guys. Shadi and I love you and pray that you have a blessed time together in the rest of this conference. Have a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you so much, Pastor Paul and Sister Shadi, for that season word. I really believe that it spoke to the hearts of the people. So I don't know about you, but I believe there is so much more that God wants to deposit and impart to you today. So we are not done yet. Later on at five o'clock, we are going to be having our afternoon streams. So I encourage you to join those streams. All you have to do is go to our Hope Alive Facebook page. There are going to be six streams, five o'clock p.m., Choose whatever stream you feel will be speaking to your season. We have streams for families and young adults and business people. So go at 5 o'clock, Hope Alive Facebook page, click on the Zoom link, and we are going to see you there. Also, after that, we have our 7 p.m. night rally with a very special guest, so you do not want to miss that. Woo! It's so exciting. We're off to a good start. Now, you all know that with our Hope Alive campaign, we have been blessing so many people. We have given over 7,000 meals to the people who are in need. We are giving and still giving grocery bags. So we're not even done with our giving yet. There is so much more and it's all because of your generosity. So if you would like to partner with us again for our Hope Alive campaign, if you wanna give into that campaign, details are to follow so just take a look at the screen after this so see you tonight at seven o'clock here are different ways you can give you can go to our website at newlife.ph slash alabang slash give another option is to download this new life app and click the give button or go to newlife.ph on your Facebook mobile or desktop app and click Learn More. If you prefer giving through Gcash, please download the Gcash app on your phone and scan the QR code on your screen. You may also give through bank transfer. Here are New Life's bank account details.